You know we're gonna be late, right? We have like five minutes. And two minutes. Oh gosh. And the worst part is we're not even like dressed for this. That's okay. We'll get Live from the TV studio at Marywood University's Learning Commons, it's Late Night Marywood. Welcome to tonight's special guests, Emmanuel Adre and radio personality, Lisa Mazzarella. And here comes the coffee lovers themselves. Please welcome your hosts, Rachel Eiler and Anne Zukowski. Thank you so much for joining us here on Late Night Marywood. I'm your host, Ann Zukowski. And I'm your other host, Rachel Eiler. It's really good to have you guys all watching another episode of Late Night Marywood. If you haven't watched our other episodes, well, first, go, go and do that. You'll, you can come back to us later. We'll be here. Um, but I am a broadcast journalism uh, major here at Marywood University as a freshman. And I'm a junior broadcast production major. And it's such a reality check that I'm already a junior, the semester's going by so fast that it's actually pretty scary. And do you know what else is really scary? My GPA, <laughs> my face when I wake up in the morning, Halloween, I don't know, Rachel, what? No, no, no. Well, basically, it's... Midterms. Midterms week? Ah, uh, yes. Just thinking about it gives me that dreadful thought that this week is sneaking up on us so fast and it pretty much just forces us to relearn everything we probably should have already learned or accidentally forgot. Yeah, or just restart learning everything you should have been paying attention to in class. But we should be preparing ourselves for these big exams probably right this second. Maybe not this second, but after the show? Yeah, um, I mean, if I weren't here right now, I'd probably pretend to be studying on second floor with my little hideout, but really, I'll just have my headphones in. Uh, you can catch me on Netflix. <laughs> well, <laughs> I've been, like, uh, lately, I've been studying for my philosophy exam. I have mm -hmm. tomorrow morning. Wish me good luck, everybody. Anyway, so, to be honest, I'm probably not going to study. I'm going to work on my motivation <laughs> to actually sit my butt down and start studying. <laughs> Maybe this is just, like, a prayer right now to all our teachers, like, just give us the A. I mean, like... But but, you know, motivation, right? I mean, what do you mean by that? Um, motivation for me means to have that drive and the energy to sit down. I'm at the point of the semester where I'm really starting to get tired and I can't even wake up in the morning and on time anyway. And it's not easy getting my work finished. <laughs> or started. Yeah, that's true, Rachel. <laughs> You're so right. Probably. I know I'm right. <laughs> this is only my second semester here as a college student. One thing that always does help me, everyone, is... I mean, including midterms week, is coffee. Just coffee. Every, everything coffee. Coffee is a given, and that's the truth for myself, too. I mean, I mean, caffeine is probably the best, right? I mean, hashtag college, college probs. probs. <laughs> <laughs> One thing that does really help me get through midterms week is obviously coffee. I mean, I like my coffee a lot, probably. Yeah, you're counting out about four to five times a day, everybody. You'll see me on that Chartwells line. But you know what's really funny, like speaking of Chartwells, is that they still don't know my coffee order up there. You mean they don't recognize the face and just know that you always want that same I know, I see the same person every day. But I always get the double caramel latte with skim milk, no you vanilla, because I really don't... This down. Yeah, write this, write, write this down. down. Tweet it to us. I don't care. <laughs> um, no, but like seriously, double caramel latte with skim milk every single morning, every afternoon, every after my three to four class. <laughs> Um, for myself, I like to change it up. Today I had a mocha, I had a frappuccino. Tomorrow probably going to get some lattes, ice cold, hot, whatever. <laughs> um, I think the best way to actually show you how I take my coffee, the fun process of getting my coffee, is by watching this. It's basically already midterms week. Like most students, I'm going to need to prioritize my work, and by that, I'm going to need a lot of coffee. Can I have a double mocha with cold milk, please? Cool. Now that I just placed my order, I just have to wait for it to be made. Overall, I don't actually mind midterms as long as I play my time, study with some friends, get some sleep, in the school beanbag chair. Wow, I just realized that I really have a lot of work to do. I have to study for bioethics, memorize facts for anatomy. Let's see what's on my phone. Ooh, my roommate just asked if I want to go to the gym. But I have so much work to do. Did I just hear my order for my coffee be called? That's me. 
Okay, Anne, you're on page 40 out of 500. You're almost done. Wow, it's only been five minutes since I started reading. I'm gonna need some more coffee. Back online I go. I love midterms. And coffee. Um, Anne, why was there a random beanbag chair? I mean, you look comfortable and all, but why? Um, I honestly don't know what... <laughs> Probably I, one of ours, honestly. I honestly don't know what that beanbag chair was doing up there by the cafe, but it was pretty comfy when I sat there. And I kind of wish that I was sitting in it, like, right now. I think new set, beanbag chairs. Everyone take note. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe I'll be back in my bean bag later tonight, after the show, if I can order another coffee or something. Yeah, I'll probably meet you there. I'll join you. <laughs> Sounds good to me. Because it's exam week and I have a huge philosophy exam tomorrow morning, I've mentioned in the past that Tuesdays are the worst and busiest days of my week for myself and just so much of a workload. I think midterms like kind of snuck up on us a lot lately only because like I mean I had my first English midterm last week that I had no idea about honestly so but it's really funny because like I mean like we said before coffee is my like go-to or go number one I guess really um, because I have it in the morning I have an evening so I mean definitely just keep studying just you got this Anne. I know you do she Thank can do you. it wish Thank her you. luck everybody. I need that pep talk <laughs> uh, one way to de-stress from the midterm week or even just that point of the semester is to relax maybe have some TV time or watch music and listen to music or draw like maybe something doodling or do some artwork that's probably why I love the beanbag chair so much because it's a moment for me to just sit and relax and everybody just stare at me at the the cafe. Yeah, I, I definitely agree. Drawing or doodling in any way is always, always great. But we will be taking a short break. And when we come back, we actually have a, a doodler ourselves. He's a graphic design major right here at Marywood, Emmanuel Ajay. So stay tuned right after this. You know what, guys? There's a lot of tree branches and dry brush over here. We should probably move the bonfire over there. I'm guessing Smokey liked that idea. You've messed up your son's haircut. Mom? Mm -hmm. Do you A, try to fix it? Like it never happened. B, work with what you've got. Or C, show solidarity. As a parent, there are no perfect answers. But you don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care will love you just the same. There are 16 million children struggling with hunger in America. That's one in five daughters, sons, neighbors, and classmates who don't know where their next meal is coming from. Yet billions of pounds of good food go to waste every year. It's time we do something about it. Feeding America is a nationwide network of food banks that helps provide meals to millions of kids and families in need. Visit feedingamerica.org to help them feed even more. Together, we can solve hunger. Together, we're Feeding America. Welcome back, everybody, to Late Night Marywood. So it's almost the month of March, so everyone can take a break because soon uh, spring break will be here and season of spring will be here. But sadly, it's still winter, and the weather we had this past weekend was so outrageous, I'm a little happy I went back to New York. Yeah, it was seriously 72 degrees or somewhere near that and almost all day on Friday. So I saw a lot of flip-flops and shorts and no jackets, which is great because I love not wearing not a jacket. Wearing a jacket. <laughs> but then on Saturday, it was like an average of 30 degrees. Mm. My dorm was so hot all weekend and it was so chill outside. I didn't really know what to expect. It was super windy also, which was not expected. And then when I, work, when I went to work on Saturday, um, so I'm stuck at work, and then we had a tornado warning, and also it was pouring. I just thought I was living a dream because it was so warm and foggy, and then it was crazy. I mean, with, with the Scranton area having, like, that major tornado warning around, like, 3.30 p.m. on Saturday, 
I mean, it, it's really crazy because I wasn't I wasn't here, and I, to get a text being like, "Hey, are we all okay?" and I'm like, "Oh gosh, what's oh, going yeah. on?" Um, I was still at work, like right. I said, so I was a little bit like worried. <laughs> I was like, "Oh darn, I'm stuck at work. I could have died, died when I <laughs> was at it. work, and that's not the way I want to die at work." Thanks to a potentially a tornado. <laughs> Thankfully, no news of actually big tornadoes happening, though I did come across a few tiny winds like pick up whenever I saw on Facebook, even back home. There are 16 million children struggling with. But this on Saturday, I couldn't believe. Yes, it's already Monday, which means it's time for us to go back to work or school, which makes it okay for us to talk about the weather or our weekend. Uh, today's weather is pretty calm and sunny, but this past weekend was pretty extreme and different for our usual Scranton area. Unless you live in a basement or didn't have the chance to go outside, here's what you missed. Friday was so clear and sunny and a high of 73 degrees. Then on Saturday, we had some random hail, heavy rain, and a big tornado warning, which is very unexpected for the Scranton area. When I wake up, like most people, I typically look outside to judge the weather on what to wear that day. Hail, rain, sun, what am I supposed to wear? Rain boots? Flip flops? Well, hopefully we don't get any more tornadoes or extreme weather. I do love my winter coat, but I'd rather wear short sleeves. Really glad I wasn't here for that. I mean, I, what are you gonna do, Anne? I mean, um, what, you gotta figure yeah. that out. So what I usually do is I bring all my winter clothing to school, and then I leave all my like in my dorm, and then I have all my summer and spring stuff at home. Mm -hmm. So I was gonna take a trip home on Saturday after work to pick up all my stuff, but after we had hail and everything, I'm thinking maybe I should just stick with my winter stuff a little bit longer and just stick to some like casual short sleeves and stuff like that. You know what was really funny? I got home and <laughs> inside, I guess from the last time I was home, I left my flip flops right at the door and my mom goes, are you gonna bring those back with you or are you gonna leave them here? I'm like, it's still winter. So uh, yeah. probably gonna keep them there for a while, but I ended up taking them back. But I feel like, you know, we gotta go back, we gotta go back to orientation and yeah. you gotta teach me what to do with all these clothes because I have no idea, everybody. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Hashtag so freshman props. Yeah, because you own so much stuff. You're like, I don't want to bring it all, but I don't want to leave it home because what if I need it? It's the like, troubles of being a girl. Let's yeah. just be honest. Yeah. But I mean, definitely the weather is crazy. And I mean, I'm hoping that it does warm up I, I, soon. I hope for spring break at least. Oh, yeah, definitely. I was actually looking at the forecast and I see some more rain and some colder temperatures later in the week. So good thing that you're going to not have those flip-flops because it looks like you're going to have to keep on your boots or something like that. It's really funny with <laughs> flip-flops because, like, I wear flip-flops until there's snow on on the ground. Like, in high school, I used to come into school wearing flip-flops. I wore jeans still. Oh, so you're one of those people? I was one of those people, <laughs> exactly. Like, you would stand at the bus stop, you would see all the guys, like, in their shorts still. No, I was the flip-flop girl, and I think I was still here, too. But, I mean, because we were, were always inside. So I think being like the flip-flop girl, I've kind of outlived my name and I'm really sad about it. But I love flip-flops. I don't like wearing like boots. Like I love these boots, but like I don't love wearing boots all the time. I'm probably the opposite because I feel like I have to like hike across campus all the time. Yeah, I'm always in one place. So maybe, maybe we should just break out the <laughs> flip-flops again. My mom was right. We're bringing back the flip-flops So out. tomorrow you're probably gonna expect to see her in flip-flops. Probably, not. I don't know what the forecast is tomorrow, but. Yeah. We'll, we'll see. Stay tuned, everybody. Stay tuned. Yeah. It'll be, it'll be good. It'll be good. Well, we're going to take, I think, a short break. break. And don't stay anywhere. Don't or stay. Don't go. <laughs> yeah, definitely stay anywhere. <laughs> stay with us. We'll be right back after the short break. There are 16 million children struggling with hunger in America. That's one in five daughters, sons, neighbors, and classmates who don't know where their next meal is coming from. Yet billions of pounds of good food go to waste every year. It's time we do something about it. Feeding America is a nationwide network of food banks that helps provide meals to millions of kids and families in need. Visit feedingamerica.org to help them feed even more. Together, we can solve hunger. Together, we're Feeding America. This is the story of a boy who was very sensitive to lights and sounds. So he built secret hiding places where nothing could get in. The boy didn't like looking people in the eye. It made him feel uncomfortable. 
One day, he found out he had something called autism. His family got him help, and slowly, he learned how to live with it better. Early intervention can make a lifetime of difference. Learn the signs at AutismSpeaks.org. They said I have troll teeth. That my voice sounded like a possessed baby doll. That no one would ever love someone as stupid as me. That I was fat. Ugly. Disgusting. The effect of bullying is potent. We will no longer be the silent majority. Now, when you see online bullying, there's something you can do about it. We're gonna take action with the eye. I am a witness. I am a witness. I am a witness. I am a witness. I am a witness, and so are you. Welcome back, everybody. Last night was one of the biggest award nights in award history. <laughs> and probably the most, like, longest and one of the craziest. Yeah, I mean, it was, uh, it was kind of like Miss Universe without Steve Harvey or people in dresses. And in Oscar form. I think I read some of the funniest tweets last night. I mean, Anne, shall we reminisce? Yes, we shall. We shall. Take it away, Anne. One tweet by Pilly, Billy Crystal said, amazing ending, wish that had happened on election day. Um, at Cable Smith says, hey, La La Land, remember when you gave us that fake happy ending and then took it away? Yeah, how's that feel? Miss Universe tweeted, have your people call my people. We know what to do. Hashtag Oscars, hashtag Miss Universe. Oh, Lord. Um, at Bob, V-U-L-F-O-V. -V. I'm calling it now. This Lin-Manuel Miranda guy is going to be a star. I think they should all go watch Hamilton and then find out. Wingsdomain.com tweeted, quote, I'm sorry, there's a mistake. Mr. Trump, you did not win the presidency. Um, at Philae Grossier, Jimmy Kimmel is making fun of people's names. Meanwhile, I literally had to Google to see he wasn't Jimmy Fallon. I just can't. <laughs> User Franza Mom tweeted, not only did Moonlight win, but we got to watch La La Land and actually have it taken out of the hands. What a time to be alive. <clears throat> and lastly, we have Anna Varraro. Uh, in 12 hours, there has been more investigation and clarification, hashtags of Oscar 2017 screw up, than there's been of Trump slash Russia ties in the last three months. <laughs> um, we all hope you enjoyed wa watching the Oscars last night. That is all the time we have for that segment. But don't go anywhere because we'll be right back on Late Night Marywood. They said I have troll teeth. That my voice sounded like a possessed baby doll. That no one would ever love someone as stupid as me. That I was fat. Ugly. Disgusting. The effect of bullying is potent. We will no longer be the silent majority. Now, when you see online bullying, there's something you can do about it. We're gonna take action with the eye. I am a witness. I am a witness. I am a witness. I am a witness. I am a witness, and so are you. So who's going to do what? I'll pack the dead batteries. Great. I'll only put what I don't need into a duffel bag. Perfect. That's totally unhelpful. No problem. Meanwhile, I will try to comfort everyone by speaking in a calm voice. And who is going to handle supplies? I can forget to do a list for us. Thanks, pal. We couldn't be any less prepared. I'm proud of you guys. Talk to your kids about who to call, where to meet, what to pack. Visit ready.gov slash kids for tips and information. Chipmunks want to remind you, bacteria can hide in food and make you ill. Wow. But you can keep bacteria from ruining your day with four simple steps. Clean. I'm waiting for the rim cycle. Separate. <laughs> cook. Fire in the hole. And chill. We chipmunks are notoriously tidy. Check your steps. The road trip to food safety starts at foodsafety.gov. There's one thing you can never have sex without. It's not something you buy. Or something you take. In fact, there's only one way to get it. It has to be given to you, freely. It's consent. 
Because sex without it isn't sex. It's rape. Consent. If you don't get it, you don't get it. It's on us to stop sexual assault. Learn how and take the pledge at itsonus.org. Right, mi cariño. So like I said, everything I learned about cooking, I learned from grandma's empanadas. Shall we go again? Yep. Mix the beef with the onions, the onions with the peppers, the peppers with the paprika, the paprika, the garlic, the garlic with the oregano, the oregano with the cumin. Got it? Got it. Throw in the olive, stir, season, stir again, pour out the flour, roll out the dough, make a circle, drop in a fistful of filling, fold over, press down, and ta-da! Hmm. Most parenting is hard to do in just two minutes. But two minutes twice a day making sure they brush is easier, and it could help save them from a lifetime of tooth pain. Welcome back to Late Night Marywood. With us right now is in our own studio is graphic design major student here at Marywood, well known for his 365 day project. Please welcome Emmanuel Ajay. Thank you so much for coming on the show. I'm, I'm glad you finally found it. We were talking yeah. before. Um, so, I mean, you're now a junior. Yeah. So what made you pick Marywood and, and how has your last three years been going for you? The last three years for me has been phenomenal. Um, I met so many great people, so many good teachers have paved the way for me and finding Marywood for me was, I can, I can say luck, lucky, yeah. if I may. Um, originally I was supposed to go to another school, but then I did a late visit to Marywood and um, I instantly got hooked on the school. I, I love the place, the setting, the people. And um, I didn't apply to Marywood till I think February actually. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, it was a gamble for me, but I got in. Well, That's God really dear. cool. Um, so besides the graphic design um, aspect here at Marywood, can you tell us a little bit about what else you like about Marywood and your reason for studying graphic design? Yeah, like I said, Marywood actually has one of the best programs in Pennsylvania for when it comes to graphic design. So when I did my research, I knew right away it was the place for me. Plus, at the time, I was also trying to play soccer in, in college, and Marywood was one of the few schools that mm -hmm. actually offered soccer plus, you know, art. Mm -hmm. So it was, a, like I said, it was really good for me. And instantly when I came, I met the coaches. He's a great guy. I uh, met my teachers and actually sat in with a couple um, students and got to get a taste of how the college life on campus is. And I immediately got hooked on it, and I really wanted to come here. So, yeah. What made you choose uh, graphic design specifically? Um, graphic design, I, I really didn't know what I was going to do with art. As a kid growing up, I only did art because my cousin, when we go on summer vacations, my cousin would um, always do art. And I, w I always want to uh, mimic him and just for like the attention and stuff like that. So like I would do art with him and as I gro got older, it kind of hooked with me. And my senior year, I actually, it wasn't until my senior year that I actually decided to pursue art. And when I did, it was it was amazing. And um, so far, it's the only thing that I can really turn to to really kind of freely express myself. Right. So um, you are really talented. If if Thanks. people go and look at your Instagram and even the murals that you've done on campus, and you have such a huge following on your Instagram, just Thank that you. alone, just mm -hmm. for your artwork, Thank really you. amazing. What inspires all that? I mean, you go from a really broad range of things that you draw. What inspires all that? Um, like I said, like it's like my day to day life as a you know college student. You know, we all go through ups and downs and. For me, I decided to kind of document it in an artistic and creative way mm -hmm. and also help others, you know, kind of lift the atmosphere because a lot of people on campus have done the same for me, not primarily through art, but, you know, just as being there for me when I needed right. them. And so in your Instagram posts, can you tell us what we're looking at? What are some of your inspirations? What are some things that you're drawing or? Um, <laughs> yeah, of course. Uh, mostly, mostly words because I, um, I'm good at lettering. It's like most of my friends make fun of me, and they say all I do is letter and not actually draw. <laughs> but um, yeah, uh, so like most of them are like quotes about the mood that I'm in, mm -hmm. like you know. But also like comments on like the social uh, current social status of you know the world or our nation. Just like kind of like I said, to, like, it's like a platform for me to express myself as an artist. Okay. So. Well, let's take a short break, and when we come back, we're going to have more with Emmanuel and talk about his 365-day project and the meals that he's done on the Marywood campus. Stay tuned. 
you think getting dumped by text is harsh, try getting dumped by tennis ball. My ex owner drove me out to the woods, yelled fetch, and by the time I bought the ball back, he was gone. Yeah, I was pissed. But the folks at the shelter helped me let go of my anger. I learned coping skills, like taking it to the hole. Boom! Now I'm ready to fetch again. But how about I throw and you run and get it? Todd's a great guy. I mean, look at him. What a sweetheart. Atta boy. Wait, Todd, what are you doing? How totally selfish and untod like of you. Come on, Todd. Come on, man. Welcome back to Late Night Mario Wood, where graphic design major Emmanuel Ajay is with us right now. So last year, as your New Year's resolution back in, I guess, 20, it's 2016, yeah. sorry, it's 2017 now. 2016, you decided to do a 365 day project. What made you start that? Um, when I decided to start, I reached out to a couple of mentors for like art and the lettering when I actually decided to kind of pursue lettering. And um, there are a couple like art projects that artists do to kind of better themselves like creatively and kind of mm -hmm. really like establish like a presence. So I know I reached out to a couple of mentors. I was lucky enough to be mentored or actually given the chance to be um, met mentored by um, Scotty Russell, a uh, hand lettering ar artist that I met on Instagram actually. And he kind of walked me through the process and presented me with a different project and I decided to do the 365 art project. We, it was really fun for me. I really grew as an artist and made a lot of new connection through it. Um, but it was also really hard, you know, trying to balance uh, school, soccer, and art at the same time every day. But I really liked enjoying it, uh, but I have to say it probably might be the last one. Like, I don't think I can <laughs> so do for managing year. your time, as a junior, the pressure is really on that you really have to start getting ready to, for jobs and right. managing all your time and really uh, drive yourself on what it is that you want to do. So what are some things to look forward to that you're maybe planning to do with your artwork in 2017? Um, currently I'm working on a, last year at Marywood I did a, the first ever um, student driven art exhibit mm -hmm. uh, and this year I'm working on a second one. Uh, it actually will be after we get back from spring break. Uh, possible date that I'm looking at is March 20th so hopefully that works for us mm -hmm. but like I'm working on the art exhibit. We um, I'm putting together with another student, Eric Buzzard, he's an illustration senior, uh, along with me and him, along with another, about 12 other students, uh, mixed majors, uh, illustration, ceramics, graphic design, wow, really nice art therapy, yeah. So we're trying to have another mirror and see how the public responds to it. Right. So um, last year you did Genesis, which is your mural, could you talk a little bit about that? The Genesis Mirror, um, inspired, it was inspired by the Marywood 100 Centennial. Um, we wanted to kind of make a statement with art in general, but also play along with the theme of Marywood, how far, you know, the school has, right. has come and all the changes that have been made over the course of the, the 100 years. And so we took that in the art perspective where we did an art piece that kind of incorporated more than one uh, famous art pieces. So we went back as far as the women of Willendorf, who is considered to be the very art piece. Mm -hmm. And we kind of, um, we use her as a foundation and built off of her with another, with a couple other uh, famous art pieces that you might be familiar with, like um, the Women of Venus, right. uh, Creation of Adam, pieces like that. And then towards the top, it was more modern, uh, postmodernism and the current era that we live in, kind of art style. Wow. That's really great involvement for the Marywood community. Um, our audience may not realize, but on the third floor of the Learning Commons, <laughs> that wall that's very, very bright blue and near the entrepreneur room. Uh, so can you tell us a little bit about how your art and possibly another student that you guys collaborated on that wall? Yeah, um, the, actually the Genesis mirror that we did actually kind of got us the job. Uh, so we, after we did the Genesis Mirror, we displayed it downtown, Scranton for First Friday. And the curator of that show, uh, Mary Rue, we shot to him to look for um, hand lettering artists, and he recommended 
recommended me and my uh, good friend Jake Santos, who's also a graphic design major. And we got the email from Chris, and he wanted us to do a mirror, and I was I was really happy to actually honor, I should say, to actually you know be part of you know all of this and the new library and knowing that I'm going to leave something that's going to affect students in a positive way. Wow. Definitely That's inspiring. It looks really nice up there. Sounds great. Thanks. And uh, we are going to take a, another short break. Um, but when we come back, we're going to put your art skills and our art skills uh, to okay. the test. Okay. Um, we want to see your artwork in action. So everyone stay tuned with us, Emmanuel Ajay. You know what, guys? There's a lot of tree branches and dry brush over here. We should probably move the bonfire over there. I'm guessing Smokey liked that idea. You've messed up your son's haircut. Mom? Mm -hmm. Do you A, try to fix it? Like it never happened. B, work with what you got. Or C, show solidarity. Thank you, baby. As a parent, there are no perfect answers. But you don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care will love you just the same. There are 16 million children struggling with hunger in America. That's one in five daughters, sons, neighbors, and classmates who don't know where their next meal is coming from. Yet billions of pounds of good food go to waste every year. It's time we do something about it. Feeding America is a nationwide network of food banks that helps provide meals to millions of kids and families in need. Visit feedingamerica.org to help them feed even more. Together, we can solve hunger. Together, we're Feeding America. This is the story of a boy who was very sensitive to lights and sounds. So he built secret hiding places where nothing could get in. The boy didn't like looking people in the eye. It made him feel uncomfortable. One day, he found out he had something called autism. His family got him help. And slowly, he learned how to live with it better. Early intervention can make a lifetime of difference. Learn the signs at autismspeaks.org. <laughs> Welcome back to Late Night Married, everyone. If you're joining us right now in the studio, we have Emmanuel Ajay, who is a junior graphic design major. You may realize that I have a marker in my hands, and Rachel here has a brown paper bag. That's because we're going to be playing a fun game. In case you're not aware, Emmanuel is a graphic design major here at Marywood, and he's very well known for his Instagram 365 date project, where he designed and drew a sketch every single day. It had an inspirational quote and other artwork that he would post onto Instagram every single day of the year. And he's known for his collaborative artwork on campus, um, so, Manny, yeah. we do have a fun game in store. Uh, we are going to use our fun dry erase board and marker, and we're going to play like a little game of Pictionary. So, in this bag, we're each going to be on our own teams, but you know, I mean, like, she can, we're, we're probably the best right here. Not, I've been doing it all day. I'm ready for this. I've been doodling yeah. in all my classes. Um, so, what we're going to do right. is have each person pick out of the bag. We have names, phrases, movie titles in here, okay. and the person is going to have to guess, and whoever gets the most guesses kind of wins. We're not keeping score because, you know, we're going to play nice here because you probably you would will win. win anyway. Probably. I don't yeah. know about that. Um, so, right. you feeling confident? A little bit. You want to go first? Sure. Why okay, not? cool. Okay. So, so, here's the marker. You get to pick one piece of paper out of the bag. Right. Don't read it aloud, just keep it to yourself, and we're going to try to guess what's on that piece of paper. If we don't get it right, we're gonna have 30 seconds to pass mm -hmm. it. Here's the marker. We'll have uh, and a head on over buzzer. to the whiteboard when you are ready. Okay. Let's so, uh, get started. I, I, let's do a little countdown. Okay. Five, four, four three, three, two, two one. one. Get started. Okay. Really it looks okay. like a letter I. It's a tree. It's a flower. It's a stem. It's a butterfly. Oh God. <laughs> um, it looks like a helmet. It looks like a light. Um, it looks like a person. Oh. Is it a person? Yeah. Oh, is it, it a person? Is, is, um, it, is, it, oh, is it somebody uh, on campus? Oh, is it? Um, is it? Oh, is it from a movie? Is it a woman? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Is it dark? 
Darth Vader. Yeah. Okay, really? the eyes gave it up. Wow, oh, good wow. job. The eyes <laughs> gave it away. Don't worry, I'm oh, going to try a little. That's like a brief Next scan. <laughs> wow, good job. Yeah, I think my hands are a little shy because you guys okay. are watching. Okay, Anne's going to go. Okay, so really I'll confident. take the marker. Do I keep the paper? Uh, yeah. All right. Yeah. Let's erase this cap bag. Okay, okay. I got the bag. Okay, let's erase this real quick. This is a phrase, so snap. Okay. Okay. Whenever you're ready, Anne. Okay, I think I'm ready. Yep. Okay. Mm, ready and draw really hard and light, Oop. and we'll be good. The marker's a little dry here. I don't know. Can you see that? I'm moving the board. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if Is you guys can see that. Shopping bag. It's a shopping bag. And okay. then. All right. <laughs> Going shopping on a sunny day. Oh, is it? Is it pet shop? Something with pets. A pet store? Pets. Light bulb bubble. Uh, Me cat. Shopping for cat food? Yeah. Yeah. Cat. cat. And then, um, cat. Cat food? Cat store? No. <laughs> oh, darn. The answer was let the cat out of the bag. I tried oh. to draw oh. a cat and I had it. Oh, oh it's like a sound bag. Oh, okay. Okay. And that was a bag you had there? Should we yeah. move this up? Maybe we should move this up a little bit. Let's move this up. Let's not push it away. I guess it's right. my turn right now. Yes, yeah, so I'll hold on to my paper. Um, so, um, are you okay? okay? Are you ready? Yeah. Okay. Mm. Let's erase this, I guess. Let's try and erase this. Oh, Careful, it's on some wheels. <laughs> my erasing skills is probably better than my drawing skills. Okay. Okay. I've been doodling like all day in my classes, <laughs> so I'm ready for this. Okay. Gonna okay, look right. at yeah. Wow. <laughs> oh yay! It's okay. It's an object. Okay, cool. All right. Okay, cool. Uh, so, so um, a river. Okay, yeah, you're getting Pass, the place right. River, okay, ponds. I honestly don't know. What is that? A flower, a purse, a bag. Um, swimming, a boat. Oh, Going you're in the right. The you're river. in the right like area okay. of things. Um, is it the Noah Ark? Oh. Like, what? A fair? <laughs> what? A fair? A fair? I don't know. Wait, what? No. I don't know. Okay, so, like, this is, like, a thingy. Um, a right. dock. And then this castle. is a thingy. What is okay, it? wait, wait, wait. Okay, oh, it's, a it's, oh, it's, it's a castle. Oh, it's a sand castle. Oh. It's a oh, sand castle. Oh, then I guess castle, you pretty much it's good. You okay. That. At least let me get half a point. <laughs> um, <laughs> wow. You did well, a really good job. I think, I don't think we have any more time for any more. And I don't think I have time to... Like, don't really <laughs> do either, anything anyway. else, but don't go anywhere because right after this, we have another guest, radio host and personality, Lisa Mazzarella, will be joining us right here on Late Night Maryland. <laughs> this is the story of a boy who was very sensitive to lights and sounds. So he built secret hiding places where nothing could get in. The boy didn't like looking people in the eye. It made him feel uncomfortable. One day, he found out he had something called autism. His family got him help, and slowly, he learned how to live with it better. Early intervention can make a lifetime of difference. Learn the signs at AutismSpeaks.org. They said I have troll teeth. That my voice sounded like a possessed baby doll. That no one would ever love someone as stupid as me. That I was fat. Ugly. Disgusting. The effect of bullying is potent. We will no longer be the silent majority. Now, when you see online bullying, there's something you can do about it. We're gonna take action with the eye. I am a witness. I am a witness. I am a witness. I am a witness. I am a witness, and so are you. So who's gonna do what? I'll pack the dead batteries. Great. I'll only put what I don't need into a duffel bag. Perfect, that's totally unhelpful. No problem. Meanwhile, I will try to comfort everyone by speaking in a calm voice. And who is going to handle supplies? I can forget to do a list for us. Thanks, pal. We couldn't be any less prepared. I'm proud of you guys. Talk to your kids about who to call, where to meet, what to pack. Visit ready.gov slash kids for tips and information. Alvin and the Chipmunks want to remind you, bacteria can hide in food and make you ill. Wow. But you can keep bacteria from ruining your day with four simple steps. Clean. I'm waiting for the rinse cycle. Separate. <laughs> cook. Fire in the hole. And chill. We Chipmunks are notoriously tidy. 
Check your steps. The road trip to food safety starts at foodsafety.gov. There's one thing you can never have sex without. It's not something you buy. Or something you take. In fact, there's only one way to get it. It has to be given to you, freely. It's consent. Because sex without it isn't sex. It's rape. Consent. If you don't get it, you don't get it. It's on us to stop sexual assault. Learn how and take the pledge at itsonus.org. Right, mi cariño. So like I said, everything I learned about cooking, I learned from grandma's empanadas. Shall we go again? Yep. Mix beef with the onions, the onions with the peppers, the peppers with the paprika, the paprika with the garlic, the garlic with the oregano, the oregano with the cumin. Got it? Got it. Throw in the olive, stir, season, stir again, pour out the flour, roll out the dough, make a circle, drop in a fistful of filling, fold over, press down, and ta-da! Hmm. Most parenting is hard to do in just two minutes. But two minutes twice a day making sure they brush is easier, and it could help save them from a lifetime of tooth pain. Hi everyone, welcome. We are back here at Late Night Marywood. Since 1993, Lisa Mazzarella has been the early morning voice at WVIA FM and from 6 to 9 a.m. the local host of the NPR's Morning Edition and produces the regional NAS, uh, newscast of our town. Thanks for joining us. Thank, Thank you so very much. much. It's great to be here. I love this studio. I'm just delighted. This is amazing. I know. Isn't it great? We love it so much. I just see all my students here. It's crazy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, it's great. Yeah, you're also a professor here. Mm -hmm. um, we do want to start with you being on the radio because uh, there's a lot of Mary with students you want to do that what has it been like how how, how did you get started I yeah. mean 1990 that's a really long time ago I mean mm. you don't look a day over 21 how did you get started uh, you want an A don't you <laughs> 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 no it started for me actually no one would ever think in a million years that I'd go into radio because mm -hmm. I was extremely quiet when I was your age you have the upper hand on me big time because when I was your age I wouldn't speak until I was spoken to uh, very shy always afraid to make a mistake and then one day I decided that I wanted to go into public relations where I could do a lot of writing for other people, have them read my, my writing. I wouldn't have to go on television. I wouldn't have to do any of that. I'd write and be quiet. And it happened at the old VMFM, and I was just doing my thing, doing something with PR, and we were having a snowstorm. And all of a sudden, the radio manager comes running in, and he goes, the radio person, she can't make it because it's snowing. You're going to have to go on the air. Wow. Uh, yeah, wow. And I said, no, I'm not. <laughs> I'm not going. He yeah, goes, you have right. to because we can't have dead air. Right. That really didn't matter to me because I wasn't going to go on the air anyway. Mm -hmm. And he says, you have to. So at any rate, I was given a primer in how to work the AP machine, which is a long time ago. <laughs> Uh, how to read the news, how much long I had, how much time I had, and what I needed to do, what things I had to cover, go. And so it was trial by fire, on the job training, and I got through the first three minutes, mm -hmm. and I thought, oh, if I could do three minutes, maybe I can do six. Oh, definitely. And so the whole afternoon went by, and I had to do the evening shift too, because no one was coming in because of the snow. Okay. And by the time the evening came, I thought, this is what I'd like to do. Okay. This is what I'd like to do. And it just kind of grew from there. It kind of burgeoned from there. So the mouse decided to roar. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so you've what been in the area cool. for a while. Um, you while. got your bachelor's from Marywood. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us a little bit about your experience here? Like, did you study PR from here? And how, how do you think it's changed over time besides our new facility and studio? Big time. I have seen such an amazing growth spurt in the students that I work with on a daily basis. Honestly, you guys are terrific. You really, really are. You've got it together. You've got such great equipment to work with. You've got some terrific professors, but you so, yes, you're so on point. You really are. You know exactly what you would like to do. You have a really good vision about what you want to do mm -hmm. with your lives, and that's phenomenal. It really is. Sometimes people wander through the, the study and they think, should I go to PR? Should I go to radio? Should I go to television? They don't know what to do. They're kind of wandering. I see a lot of really decisive individuals who want to do specific things and that's a good thing on your part too. It says well, a lot you about you. Thank for recognizing that. We definitely do try. So that's something that go us and everybody <laughs> out there. Good job audience. <laughs> um, so I mean being from Marywood and kind of seeing the development and growth, mm. uh, I mean, and now you said like you were so shy. Um, so now that you've been doing radio for a really long time, um, how 
I mean, I guess in a way, like, what do you think about now when you're on the air? I mean, a lot of us, I know when I'm on the radio, I just, I think about like, okay, I'm not talking to really anyone, I'm just talking to myself. It's like I'm in my room again, back in like high school and just like being weird and all. <laughs> but um, how, what do you, what goes through your head when you're actually on the air now? There are a couple things that go through my head when I go on the air. I know that the moment that I flip that switch, there was an, an old time radio announcer who is no longer with us by the name of Frank Labar. Mm -hmm. He was one of these old time radio and television people. And when I started radio, I was very wide eyed and oh, this is great. Oh, this is fantastic. And he goes, honey, this is gonna be the kind of a feel that you're gonna love and it's gonna break your heart. And mm -hmm. he was right. Because there have been times where you try, 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 and the things that you try, they just didn't seem to pan out. Mm -hmm. But then all of a sudden, things come out of left field, and, and they just seem to work. And it just brings you such joy. And he goes, you're only as good as your last show. And so every time I flip that mic up, I think, you're only as good as your last show. So what does that mean? That means you want to try to do your best every single day, no matter how terrible you might feel, right. no matter how... How, how cloudy your mind might feel. It is your job, your obligation, I guess your mission right. as an on-air personality mm -hmm. to know that you've got an audience out there. Right. And it's not just you and the mic, it's you and Listeners. hundreds of thousands of ears that are looking to you, mm -hmm. listening to you for some sort of entertainment, enjoyment, information, little encouragement. Mm -hmm. So you're doing somewhat of a mission. It really is a, a neat field. Wow, thank you so much. Uh, yeah, we're, you're doing great. Well, when we come back, since you are a Mary professor, we will be talking more about that. Uh, and when we come back, right after this, we'll be taking a short break of how you got started teaching here at Marywood University. So we'll be right wow. back. Really nice. Right, mi cariño. So like I said, everything I learned about cooking, I learned from grandma's empanadas. Shall we go again? Yep. Mix beef with the onions, the onions with the peppers, the peppers with the paprika, the paprika with the garlic, the garlic with the oregano, the oregano with the cumin. Got it? Got it. Throw in the olives, stir, season, stir again, pour out the flour, roll out the dough, make a circle, drop in a fistful of filling, fold over, press down, and ta-da! Hmm. Most parenting is hard to do in just two minutes. But two minutes twice a day making sure they brush is easier, and it could help save them from a lifetime of tooth pain. You think getting dumped by text is harsh? Try getting dumped by tennis ball. My ex owner drove me out to the woods, yelled fetch, and by the time I bought the ball back, he was gone. Yeah, I was pissed. But the folks at the shelter helped me let go of my anger. I learned coping skills, like taking it to the hole. Boom! Now I'm ready to fetch again. But how about I throw and you run and get it? Welcome back, everyone. We are in the studio right now with radio personality and Marywood professor Lisa Mazzarella. So um, thank you for joining us. Thank you. Uh, we just pretty much talked about your experience as a radio host. And not only that, you uh, are producing or producer of Our Town. And on top of that, you are a professor here at Marywood. So I actually had you as a professor. <laughs> yep. Everybody I mean, I'm having studio. you right now. <laughs> but um, how, how did you get started teaching at Marywood? Oh. What made you come back? Oh gosh, I, I, I have always loved Marywood. I have always loved the education I got at Marywood. And it was always a dream mm -hmm. that if I had an opportunity to come back in some way, to give back in some way, I, I would. And an opportunity came when I was on the air for about six or seven years and I was approached by the communications department and they had asked if I would like to teach. Mm -hmm. And I felt as though I was like over the moon. I was so happy mm -hmm. to know that I was good enough to come back to where I learned what I learned. And what I've learned on the outside, I was able to bring into the students who were just starting. Nice. So it was really neat. So, so you, what are the, some of the courses that you're teaching oh. in the communications department? Well, I'm teaching public speaking, right. undergraduate public speaking. I do teach a grad course in public presentation, which is a little bit more intense. Mm -hmm. You have to speak a little longer. <laughs> and it's more, it's more, outside of the outside of the classroom type right. of work it really is quite a nice challenge and i'm working with the hesa program it's the uh, african sisters that uh, are in zambia and in rwanda kenya wow. and i'm teaching them the same class i taught i'm teaching you right now public speaking mm -hmm. in africa 
Uh, there's an eight hour difference. So my class with them online is at one o'clock in the afternoon, which is close to their bedtime. Mm -hmm. And yet I am absolutely overwhelmed by by the way they just absorbed everything so quickly and they just want to learn so much more. Right. You know, they, are, they actually find it a joy to like public speaking. Mm. They look forward to it like not many other kids do. <laughs> <laughs> they hate the class. It's not one of the most liked. I don't know of anybody jumping for joy to take a public speaking course. I think I did. Did you really? <laughs> oh, I'm so yes, glad. Yes. Well, thank you. You're an exception to the rule. Whoa. Well, in, in public speaking, we do have a lot of rules and tips and, mm. and advice. What would be your number one advice in public speaking? Number one, believe in yourself. Mm -hmm. Believe in yourself because I have to tell you that no matter what you choose, no matter what you say, no matter how you decide to position it, mm -hmm. if you don't believe in yourself and if you don't believe in your topic, it's never going to come across accurately or passionately. Right. Two, very important, you got to have the inner fire. If you don't have the inner fire, if it's just a little spark, if it's just a little and there's just that's it, it's going to show. You've got to have that enthusiasm. You could talk about lint and be enthusiastic and have everybody get oh, all excited yeah. about it. But if you are very mediocre with your presentation, you're going to get a mediocre response. Wow, really good points. Uh, we could use that not just for speech class or whenever we give speeches, but pretty much our everyday life when we wake up to have energy and yes. really just be positive and believe in ourselves. Um, I think that's all the time we have for right now, but when we come back, uh, Miss Mazzarella will be putting together Rachel's and I's uh, speaking skills to the test. Oh, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that was... Um, Stay tuned yeah. after this. Yes. We'll be right back. There are 16 million children struggling with hunger in America. That's one in five daughters, sons, neighbors, and classmates who don't know where their next meal is coming from. Yet billions of pounds of good food go to waste every year. It's time we do something about it. Feeding America is a nationwide network of food banks that helps provide meals to millions of kids and families in need. Visit feedingamerica.org to help them feed even more. Together, we can solve hunger. Together, we're Feeding America. This is the story of a boy who was very sensitive to lights and sounds. So he built secret hiding places where nothing could get in. The boy didn't like looking people in the eye. It made him feel uncomfortable. One day, he found out he had something called autism. His family got him help. And slowly, he learned how to live with it better. Early intervention can make a lifetime of difference. Learn the signs at AutismSpeaks.org. They said I have troll teeth. That my voice sounded like a possessed baby doll. That no one would ever love someone as stupid as me. That I was fat. Ugly. Disgusting. The effect of bullying is potent. We will no longer be the silent majority. Now, when you see online bullying, there's something you can do about it. We're going to take action with the eye. I am a witness. I am a witness. I am a witness. I am a witness. I am a witness, and so are you. Welcome back, everyone. So WVIA FM's radio host personality, Lisa Mazzarella, is right here in the studio, and we have a fun activity for you. Uh -huh. You're going to be judging Rachel and me, and we're going to be uh, giving you a little bit of a persuasive speech. Ooh. And you have to decide who is more persuasive, oh. me or Rachel. Or me. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Give me so, what you got. Let's so, see. I mean, you want to go first, Anne? Oh, I mean, snap. Let's, let's see. Uh, you got. I think I'll, I'll go first. I'll stand to the side. You can stand more in the middle. First. All right, so I guess I'll stand right here. Um, so, you're driving in the car, driving in the car, and you hear a little buzz. And it's your phone. You need to be careful because you're driving. You need to not be distracted. So, when you're driving, you need to be considerate of other people, not just yourself, not who's in the car with you. Uh, be considerate of every, your surroundings because you're operating a vehicle. Sure, you have many things going on in your head, in the car, around you definitely you need to be considerate and not be distracted so for when you're in the car you need to not be distracted by the people next to you your electronics and you need to be considerate of what's around you distracting driving is extremely important because you're putting yourself at risk do you realize how much you are worth it's not worth you being distracted and possibly getting hurt 
not only yourself, but your vehicle. Cars cost a lot of money. <laughs> I may not know that, thanks to my parents. They uh, really helped me out. But anyway, so cars cost a lot of money. Not just yourself or your car, also the people around you. Do you realize that you're putting yourself, the people in the car, and your surroundings, not just other people, not just their cars, but also animals? That could be a lot of damage to yourself, and distracted driving is a huge thing that revolves every single day, our everyday life. So don't use your phone. Don't get distracted around the people around you. Okay, good. Good job. <laughs> All right, I guess that's my Time's up. up. We're in a political debate now. Yes. <laughs> okay. Do you want the evaluation uh, now, or would you like the other two? Oh, oh let me go first. Let, okay. me, let me show her All up right. a little bit. Let me just <laughs> Yeah? I mean, I'm a little more uh, prepared for this because I'm in class now. I have it tomorrow. Um, <laughs> <laughs> okay. We got it. We're ready. We're ready, everybody. I think we're all ready. Prepare yourselves for this. Okay. okay. Three, two, get going. Cool. So I am from New York. I'm actually not from Pennsylvania. I'm from a town called Poughkeepsie, and it's about an hour away from the city. And from people from Poughkeepsie, Hopewell Junction, Fishkill, we all say very, very different words. However, I believe there is a politically correct way to say something. For example, you have the word caramel and others who say caramel. However, caramel is politically correct. And this is because of the way the spelling and the Urban Dictionary and all the other dictionaries would like to pronounce it. Now, if you spell out caramel, there is an extra A. So you have care. So instead of C-A-R-E, you have C-A-R-A. So it's not car, because you don't want to start with car. You're not elongating the caramel. Um, it's not spelled that way. So when you have caramel, it's C-A-R-A-M-E-L. It's clearly pronounced caramel because you are stressing the beginning but not overshaping it very well. Caramel is overshaped, and if you think about it, if you sound it out, it's C-A-R-M-E-O-L, really, if you think about it, because um, you're saying caramel, not car caramel. Um, the other the other problem I have, and uh, again, my grandparents are from Brooklyn, so we say Brooklyn a little weirdly, but coffee. Coffee is a big one. People say coffee, coffee, and even caffeine. But coffee is the right way because you're stressing out the E's at the end and you are elongating the O in the beginning. So you have coffee, not coffee, caffy, and it's caramel, not caramel. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Okay. Wow. Wow. Okay. Well, since you just spoke, I've got all of your information in my, my brain. I think that you really were zoning in on colloquialism, the way people speak in different areas. I think that if you speak a little bit slower, take your time, because I know that you only had two minutes because we're, we're beating the clock here. Take your time when you speak, and also position your main points. Let me know exactly what you want to say in the very beginning, and hit me with something that's going to make me go, oh, mm -hmm. what's the difference between caramel, caramel, just like they say orange or orange, that's Florida or Florida, that. <laughs> that kind of thing, Uranus or the other thing, you know, the planet. So. Again, it's all colloquialism. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that was a very nice, nice speech. Just needs a little more refinement. So tomorrow I'll hear it in its <laughs> refined state. <laughs> That's why I'm in your class. <laughs> and as far as your speech is concerned, yes, it is terrible to drive, you know, just being distracted and so forth. I heard that about 10 times in your speech. So what you're trying to do is really drive the point home, no pun intended, that it's really dangerous to drive while you're distracted. I think if you said it once, that would be enough, and gave me some examples. I mean, aside from, uh, beside the, uh, the car and the hitting of the animals and something like that, a little more concrete. Again, no pun intended. Uh, just one of these things that you just have to refine it a little bit. Two minutes, it's tough. It's tough to be able to give me a beginning, a middle, and an end, and secondary and tertiary points. And Monroe's motivated sequence, you didn't do the five steps, girls. Mm -hmm. You didn't do the five mm -hmm. steps. Mm -hmm. Maybe Two three of the five. Same, same, same. Three of the five. So I think that I think you have to give you a B on both of your okay. speeches. Okay. Okay. As long as we're tied. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Um, so what about general? Who, but who do you think really got first? I. I that's apples and oranges. <laughs> Apples and oranges. <laughs> oranges. She just oranges. wants to be nice to Rachel. She's just because I have a great vision. tomorrow. And maybe their parents yeah. are watching. I don't want to be the complex or anything like well, that. Well, that is anyway, all the time we that we had. It was a lot of fun. Thank you so much. Thank you. And uh, tonight on Late Night Marywood, we're going to have a little bit more. Uh, joining us next week, we will be back here in the studio at 9 p.m. So definitely tune in and check us out on Facebook Live and Comcast Channel 21. Uh, make sure to... Uh, 
follow Emmanuel AJ on Instagram. And Lisa Mazzarella on Twitter, and you guys can go listen to her show. Uh, so we wish you all the best of luck on your midterms, and make it a great, great week, everybody. Have a great one.